Hi, I'm Ali. I'm a product designer at ODK. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to design your first XLS form. And to be honest, I was a little bit hesitant and nervous about designing my own XLS form. I mostly think about the user experience of ODK tools, so this felt out of my comfort zone. But in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how to use question types, how to use some of the logic building blocks of XLS forms, and you'll walk away feeling more confident about designing your own XLS forms. To get started, we've created two resources based on user feedback to help guide beginners and help experienced users get better. We have the XLS form template with helpful hints about each column, cheat sheets for you to reference, and other powerful techniques. We also have a written tutorial which you can use to follow along to this video. Links to these resources are in the description below. To start, you're going to open the XLS form template. You can use any spreadsheet software to create and update an XLS form. You could use Google Sheets, Excel. I'm going to be using Google Sheets. So what you want to do is make a copy. What we're going to be doing is building a census survey for a school. So in the type column, we're going to select our question type. You can see that there are a lot of different question types. We're going to start with text question. In the name column, we're going to add school name. In the label, we're going to write, what is the school's name? And we're going to make this a required question. Next, we're going to add a required image question. So in the type column, you're going to write image, find it in the drop down. In the name column, you're going to write school front picture. And in the label column, what the data collector is going to see is you're going to write take a picture and then you're going to use the expression dollar sign curly bracket school underscore name curly bracket. We want to give the data collector a hint. So we're going to say include the front door. That's what we want them to take a picture of. And we're also going to make this required. Next, we're going to hop over to the parameters column. Here we're going to write the max pixels. In this case, we're going to do 1024 pixels. Now we're going to add an optional location question. So in the type column, what you're going to do is select GeoPoint. In the name column, you're going to write school location. And in the label column, you're going to use that same expression as before and write what is the school's location. Now we're going to add an integer question that only allows positive values. In the type column, we're going to write integer. In the name column, we're going to write student count. And in the label, we're going to write how many students are enrolled. We're going to make this a required question. So we're going to go to the constraint column and we're going to make sure that it must be greater than zero. And then we're also going to give the data collector a constraint message to make sure that they have feedback if they enter a value that's not allowed. So we're going to write must be a positive number. Now we're going to add a question for selecting multiple options. And we are going to add a question that asks the data collector what grades are taught at that school. So we're going to have three choices, primary, middle, and high. So what we're going to do is go to the choices sheet. This is a sheet that we use to specify lists of choices that will be used in the select questions. In the list name column, we're going to put the name of the list that all of our choices will belong to. So we're going to write grades. In the name column, we're going to write primary. And in the label column, we are going to write primary one to five. In the list name column, we're going to write grades again so that it belongs to the same choice list as above. In the name column, we are going to write middle. In the label column, we are going to write middle. We're going to do six to eight. Next, we're going to add the choices for the high grade. So in the list name, 
again, grades, so it belongs to the same group. And in the name column, we're going to write hi. And in the label column, we're going to write hi, 9 to 12. And we're going to go back to the survey sheet. In the type column, we're going to write select multiple grades. And this is going to give you an error because your sheet doesn't know about that question or that list name of grades just yet, but that can be ignored, not to worry. And in the name column, we're going to write grades top. And in the label, we're going to write what grades are top. And we're also going to make this required. Let's make this. Uh, this question, their choices appear horizontally next to each other. So we're going to scroll over and we're going to see the appearance. Here we're going to select columns. We're going to add one more question that is shown depending on the previous answer. So what we're going to do in the type column, we're going to select text. In the name column, we're going to write advanced math. In the label column, we're going to write, what is the most advanced math class available? We're going to make this required. And let's make this question appear only if the school teacher teaches high school grades. So in the relevant column, we're going to write select, and then we're going to use another expression, grades taught, and then high. Now we are going to specify the form's title and ID. So you're going to go to the settings sheet. And in the form title, you're going to write a title that people who interact with this form should see. So you could write whatever you want. In the form ID, you can put an ID that uniquely identifies this form. So in this case, we're going to write school census 23. In the instance name column, we're going to put a name that identifies each submission of this school form. Now you can try out your form in Central. So what you want to do is download it and then log into your Central server. Now that you're in Central, you can go to your projects. Um, if you don't already have one, you can create one and give it a name. And then you're going to go to New. And then you're going to drop your form. And you're going to upload it. All right, so it's been uploaded successfully. And now you can go and preview it. And here it is. And that's it. You've done it. Congratulations. You've created your first XLS form. Let us know what you think of this video. If you want more tutorials like it, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.